Well, welcome everybody. Great to see everybody out there. We hope everybody's staying cool tonight. Uh, certainly on the East Coast and a lot of the middle part of the country, we know that uh, it hasn't been very comfortable. So we hope wherever you are, you have a cold drink and you have, you have uh, air conditioning or a fan or something to keep you cool. We just had a wonderful time um, doing the Runner's Edge Main Street Mile this year. Uh, we try to provide as much entertainment and as much fun as we've had in the previous 15 years when we gathered in Farmingdale on Labor Day weekend with family and friends to support uh, good health and uh, obviously the great cause that Pat LaFontaine uh, created with his companions and courage, helping pediatric patients in the hospital. We hope you have enjoyed. This is our third Courage Hour. Courage Hour is uh, become kind of a little fun thing for all of us. Uh, we have uh, a really fun little show tonight. We're just going to put together some reminiscing of past events and talk a little bit about how wonderful the support was. So many of you supported us this year. We can't thank you enough. So as always, we begin with uh, welcoming our primary guest. So Hockey Hall of Famer, all around nice guy, Pat LaFontaine, and running Hall of Famer, just <laughs> celebrated his, uh, it's a very significant birthday. Very significant birthday, number 75 for Bob Cook. He's not 75, there's no know, way. A, a legend in the running community. Bob, thank you so much for everything you do. And a, a kind of a new face to many of you who have watched the first two Courage Hours, but he's been behind the scenes on all of them, uh, is our great friend Mark Leff. And I'm going to ask Mark if you could just give us a quick overview to start of what happened with this year's event? How, how did things work? Facebook, Main Street Mile page. Talk a little bit about how it worked, how many people came and supported, and just a general overview of the race. You know, it was unfortunate that we weren't able to do the live event this year. You know, we bring in over 500 people typically every single year. But again, given what's going on with COVID-19, that wasn't, you know, unfortunately couldn't happen. So what we decided to do was, and again, there's a lot of virtual events, virtual races that are starting to take place. I will say by taking advantage of technology of social media and the capabilities you have on run sign up and, but to also make sure we learned a lot to really make sure that the experience was an optimal experience as well. If we can't do the race live, how can we at least make sure that you could do it on your own but also have a little bit of fun competition, give to a great cause, and really keep the spirit going that we've had over the past 16 years. And I, I was thrilled by what I saw. You know, and what we did was we set up two different divisions. One was a mile division, where again, we ran for time. We'll be here, you know, I know Trent Hampton will be, will be on later, and tremendous performance, not just from Trent, but from Noel Cutter, who I know is here as well too and so many others. And but what was really cool about this year is that in doing a virtual event, we not only had people from Long Island and the New York area come, but from places like Florida. My, my nephew, Alex Leff, as a matter of fact, not only did a 638 mile, but he did over 100 miles in the, in the, uh, in the mileage division. So we're so going gonna, gonna to go look at that in a couple of minutes, Mark. But what I would, I would love for you to do is to tell us about the, the shirt that everybody is going to be getting that participated and here's a here's a copy of it tell us tell us what went into designing the shirt it was a team effort you know between you myself sue cook you know and, and mindy among others really putting together one a great team effort and two it's a nice sport tech technical shirt and what we did was we i want to really stress that when you look at the back of the shirt we are thanking every single significant sponsor that has worked with us over the past 16 years we wanted to really take the time to be able to thank everyone, given the extraordinary times and the, and, and the unique times that we are living in, in 2020. If you look at the front of the shirt, you got to love the character of, of Pat 
And, you know, and what great spirit as well, too. And we talk about stay courageous, courage over Corona. That was that was really the theme for this year, Jim. And I just, you know, want to stress, we'll be get that shirt will be in everyone's possession over the next couple of weeks. We, you know, now that the event is officially closed. But again, we've got all the final details to get everybody their shirts. It will be mailed directly to you. And we, again, wanted to make sure that there's also a unique memento of what was definitely a unique and memorable event this year as well. Well, you sure did a great job. And I know Sue Cook worked with you on that. And, uh, and I think, you know, it, it's really wonderful, all of our sponsors. In particular, I wanted to call out Cisco Systems, uh, the Runner's Edge, the Nutty Irishman, and Dr. Larry Lembo for their amazing support. You know, these are tough times, not only for athletes, but also for our many sponsors. Maybe it's a good segue. Bob, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about how is Farmingdale, like many communities across the country, how are they faring? And, and very specifically, how are you doing with your store? Are people able to come in? Are you doing online? What's going on there? Well, what we started with, you know, when they let us reopen, we started by, um, we were doing appointments only, which worked really well. I was very happy and we were surprised at how that did. Uh, so during the whole, the bad, the worst times of this for us, uh, we were doing a lot with the website. So now I, I see the people were very excited to get back to the store. So we still had kept the front door locked. And this week we decided to open it up you know, we're still, everybody's wearing masks. We check everybody in. Uh, but people seem to be happy to come back to a store. And I think they were particularly happy, though, that we've been careful. You know, we spray everything down after everyone leaves. Everybody's separated really well in the store. So, and Farmingdale itself, you know, it seems to, seems to be coming along all right. If the bars don't screw it up, you know. <laughs> I guess that's the thing we're having trouble with now. And I can understand people want to go to bars, but you know, what we're seeing again is I think we just have to really be careful guys, you know? Yeah. And you heard in my advanced age, I got to be particularly careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you still look great. Can't believe 75. There's no way. Wow. You look great. And, and I love, I love this picture of the two of you guys. This is from a few years ago. And this is the spirit of what the event means to the community of, of Long Island, really. It's a great way for people to get together. And this year we got together, but we just did it virtually. So I, I wanna thank you for holding the fort, really, Bob, and, and keeping things going in your little corner of the world. That's really all you can you know, uh, attest to. And it's great that so many people I see people running all the time. People are out, uh, you know, staying healthy. Even though the heat, you know, you get up early in the morning, you see so many people out there still running, still participating, and that's wonderful. So good job on you. Um, Pat, I wanted to talk to you a little bit. First of all, I, I, have, to, I have to call out a couple of people that made major, major donations. And they're friends of ours, and uh, you know, you just have to shake your head and thank them very much. Um, Cheryl Brown and Clinton Brown and uh, Johnny Ward made some really significant donations in support of Companions and Courage in the last week here, and. Pat, why don't you talk a little bit about what both Cheryl and Johnny Ward mean to CIC and to the kids? Oh, thanks, Jimmy. Um, <clears throat> I, we've always talked about Friends of the Foundation, and um, this year, obviously, missing, you know, not being able to do the run. So to see all the sponsors and Bob and then read stories about Cheryl and what, what Johnny Ward have done, uh, and by the way, congratulations to Cheryl, uh, Grandma Cheryl, Clinton and Sophia, little Logan. I want to congratulate both her and uh, Clinton Sr. on being grandparents and uh, very exciting for, uh, for Clinton, C3, uh, and Sophia. So congratulations. Um, you know, Jimmy, I, I think 
you know, why we called it Companions in Courage, where the, really the the impetus started with the 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 inspiration from the courageous kids in the hospital room. But what's transcended is, to me, it's it seems to have filtered and and kind of inspired the whole Companions in Courage family. Um, I look at this as a family. This is 16 years now. And I can't believe Bob, first of all, there's, I'm going to say this again, you're no way you're 75, <laughs> you're, you're 58 at the most Thank and you. many years to go. And, you know, obviously Mark, and I know Trent's going to come on soon. I remember watching him do all these amazing races and Jimmy, everything you've done. And so to see the friends of the foundation and then the courage that's kind of really trickled right into the family of, of CIC where Johnny's been through his own tough battles with, uh, uh, you know, I hate to say the word, another word that starts with C and uh, showed tremendous inspiration and courage. But I also think he gets it from the kids, from watching what the Companions and Courage Foundation does for children. I know you've gone through it. I know Cheryl helps us at our golf events, at our running events. I have to tell you, you know, I've been very blessed to play on many teams. Uh, but to play on the CIC team and have members like everyone here uh, is one of the greatest, you know, joys in my life. And I'm so fortunate. Uh, so for people like, you know, everybody on this screen, everyone who's listening, everyone who supported the race, our sponsors, and to put a spotlight on Cheryl Brown and Johnny Ward, uh, we can't thank you enough from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for your courage. Stay courageous. And obviously, courage over uh, Corona too. Let's let's uh, let's keep let's keep picking up speed. Yeah, well, picking up speed is Johnny Ward. You see him on the right of your screen there playing his bass while he was getting chemo. It was exactly five years ago today. He was diagnosed with esophageal cancer and not given much chance at all of surviving. But he was uh, really motivated by the kids from CIC and some really strong friendships and happy to report he's doing fantastic. Cheryl, you mentioned uh, becoming a grandmother uh, is, is extraordinary, but her and Clinton also wanted to recognize a couple of people that are important in their lives. Edie Vitale, Adele Gordon, and Richard Sanginario, who have passed away recently. And rather than just you know, buy flowers or candy or something like that, they decided that they would make a very nice donation to Companions and Courage. So we're very blessed that they did that. And we appreciate that. As we do everybody who participated in this event. It's just been overwhelming to see the response. And we're so excited because uh, uh, I'm gonna ask Mark if you can go into a little bit more detail, Mark, on uh, how things, you know, wound up. We had really a, a pretty spirited race for both the men's and the women's. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what transpired? Mark, where'd you go? We may have lost Mark. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Trent broke five minutes. He did four, mi four minutes and 59 seconds. And That's you got to love the Facebook post that he put up where he said that this was an honor to do this for the foundation. And we really, really appreciate that. Noel, an absolute terrific performance. I think it was a 525, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but I know that there were, there were several sub six minute performances. Kevin Arloff was another one who also was, was sub six minutes as well. I mentioned my nephew, Alex, left down in Florida, 638. You know, overall, I mean, th this morning I got an email from Dr. Mary Trotto over in Hawaii. She did it in 13 minutes. So, you know, we had coverage from all over, not only all over the country, but it seems like all over the globe as well, too. But some terrific performances in the mile division. We also had a division that from June 16th to July 6th, uh, 16th, we also had a division where it was however many miles you can run. And Colleen Byrne from Wanto, she did 119. Wow. Stephen Kessler did 107. Okay. We have five individuals who broke 100 miles. 
and uh, Stephen's brother, I believe his name is Jeff, forgive me if I have his name wrong there, he had over 100. Alex, my nephew, had over 100. I think it was 104 that he did all together, and Noel had 106. So, and there were some other great performances as well. I even got 51 miles in myself, by the way. And, 51 uh, miles, are you sure you didn't take a, an Uber? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. How did you know? But anyway. Uh, hey, I <laughs> want to throw out a, a shout out, Pat, our old friend Chris Bada. Yeah. Chris, Chris Bada ran 62 miles. Oh, yeah. awesome great job, job for Chris. Awesome. awesome. Chris Chris now runs the, uh, I think he's doing the PR for the National Women's Hockey League. And we also had, by the way, Nate Oliver, who is the GM of the Buffalo Buttes from the uh, NWHL, he also participated. So, yeah, uh, big shout was, out to, to, to Chris, Nate, and obviously uh, we have a special, you know, to Nicole, obviously, to Nicole Oliver, too. So huge shout out to them. And, and all of these miles, Bob, I would think there's going to be a few more runners showing up at your store. It's got to be some more <laughs> Dudes. Yeah, we keep looking, you know, Pat. <laughs> trying to find them. <laughs> well, we want to. We have a very special guest with us right now. It's Trent Hampton. Trent, if you can unmute yourself, we want to. We want to bring Trent in here. He's just got to figure out how to work. He can run fast, but working this computer stuff is a little challenge. There he goes. He's there good. you go. Trent, how are you, bud? I am good. Bob, nice to see you. Charles, Pat. Got, I, I've run this race every year. Every year? Trent, yeah, every year. Every year, Trent. Trent I, have you ever missed a year? Nope. I run it every year since it used to be in the afternoon. Remember, it used to be at 5 o'clock at night? Exactly. <laughs> Very beginning. Trent, I see you every year. I see you at every race. And my best, my best performance on, on, on that course is 445. That's the fastest I've run. Wow. Yep. Wow. Now, where did you run your 459? Where'd you do it? I did it on the track because I couldn't get, because it was part, I did it part of my workout. So I did a hard, I did a hard uh, mile trial and that's when I did it on the track. That's why it was so fast. It's well, great. Tremendous. You know, Bob, Bob always tries to have the wind at the runner's back, plus the first third of the race coming downhill. Yeah. And, and, and that is, well, certainly for somebody like Pete Hawkins, who's, racing in a wheelchair, I know he's always excited when the wind is coming out of the north and pushing him south. So on, on the day that you ran, was it one of these real hot days, or did you do it early yeah. in the season? You, you know what? Um, I did a virtual run. I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, Olympia, the Olympic distance runner, Kara Gusher and, Sh and Shalane Flanagan. You, ever, you know them? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what what one because I won one of the virtual races, I got a free month of training from them, and one of those sessions was really hot and it was a really long workout, and that's when I did the mile, and it was wow. hard. Wow, it was hard. Now now Trent, what's your best distance? What do you like to run the most? I I'm a good distance runner, but I can run um um I like to run anything from the 400 up to like a 10k because i have the speed to, i have the turnover speed so yeah. that really helps that's that's phenomenal bob bob do you have any questions for trent bob uh, <laughs> hello trent What's no up, i just uh it's been great i've known trent for so long now and he's progressed so far uh, i just have like a lot of love for trent uh you know and that's all i can say you know yeah, knowing you fit I pretty much the whole time you've been running, right, Trent? Yep, and I have a lot of respect for you because yeah. there, because you, you know, you know, I'm, I'm working, but I don't, I'm, I'm on a low income end of, you know, I don't make a lot, and I don't have a lot of resources. So year after year, Bob and his staff always have been there for me, and have always encouraged me and helped me get sneakers and made sure that I have the proper footwear. And not only that, they, I was, um. I went to the uh, uh, I did the I went to the World Games in Dubai last year, and they uh, the store donated shoes for me to compete last year. Wow! And I came home, came home with two bronze medals, one in the triathlon and one in the mile. Obviously, you know I ran a four thirty yeah. mile. So, yeah. tremendous to see you. You know, Trent. You know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, now, Trent, you had a a really nice message that you left for Pat. 
can you tell us, I mean, you, you've run this event every year. You know about helping the kids out in the hospital. Yep. Yep. Have, have you ever had the occasion to either visit a kid in the hospital or to be inspired by a kid that, you know, maybe in the neighborhood or maybe a kid you run with? Mm -hmm. you, I know you've done some things with Rolling Thunder. Yes. What, what do you get out of that when you give back to the kids that are trying to run? Uh, well, the, the, what, what I get out of it is spending time with the, with the kids, with the disabled kids, and, and getting to know them and understand them, what makes them tick, how to get them to run without forcing them and screaming and yelling, just talking to them a little bit, encouraging them to, 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 to you know, to um, run. And um, me, you know, as a disabled athlete myself, uh, you know, they consider me on a high, high uh, functioning end of that. Um, Cause you know, I can take, take care of myself to, to some extent. Um, but my gratitude is given, cause so many people have given to me in this running community. It, it's very expensive and it's very, very, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of time with training and funds and, and I don't have a lot of resources. So when people give back to me, I feel like I need to give back because you, you can't just take, you got to give, you know, and that includes with runners as save the running, it's all the running. You got to, you got to support the running community. You got to help out others. You got to volunteer, do some charity work because at the end it all neutralizes itself. And I believe in that. And that's why I'm having this, this wonderful fortune of running fast times, having, you know, getting good PR like this, supporting them, especially companions and courage. I've heard about companions and courage for a long time. And this time I donated to them by registering for the race. So this time I said, you know what? Let me let them have that because they deserve it. Hey, hey Trent, you, you epitomize what a companion and courage the companion part needs to give to the courage. And so just your example and the fact that you give back, and I said this earlier, maybe finishing the mile is the goal, but you're giving a lot of assist to the kids and uh, you epitomize what the Companions and Courage family is all about. So thank you all these years. And obviously you spoke about what Bob does in the community. Oh. And, and it, it all comes back, it all comes back around, but the leadership and the setting the culture, you know, it's something that we, we feel blessed to have somebody like yourself. I know Matt's on here now and obviously Mark and Bob, this isn't just one year, this is all 16 years. And if it's your first race or your 16th race, you know, we can't thank you enough for the example you show others and being a part of this family. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Well, Trent, I have, I have some interesting news for you. Uh, Noelle Cutter, who is the woman who ran the fastest time, she's, mm -hmm. she isn't on the live video with us right now, but she just sent you a message, and she's just really impressed by you, Trent. And she said, congratulations, and please keep it up. Oh, she is here. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, she's definitely. Yeah. I, I, want, <laughs> I want Noelle to come on for a, a minute with us. Please, Noelle. If you can uh, bring up your video and your audio, we would love to have you on here with uh, Trent right now, if you can. Hi, Noelle. Well, Noelle, Noelle's a very interesting person. Well, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background on her. She's a professor at Malloy yep. College, and yep. she studies some level of science that is so far <laughs> beyond my comprehension, I can't even tell you what it is. Somehow, she finds time to get out there and run. And she's been involved in the running community for a long time. And she is, uh, okay. So she sent me a note, she's not sure how to get on. So what, what we'll do is, <clears throat> we'll talk about Noelle for a minute. Let's give her a hand, let's give her a hand too. So Absolutely. Hey, Noelle. Hey, Noelle. Wow. Noel, I think I think Noel, uh, Mark, maybe you can fill in a little bit on Noel. I I believe this was not her first uh, Main Street Mile run. I think she's been involved with this for a while. She has been. I don't know how far back it actually goes. I'd have to go back and double check the stats, but I know she's been she's been a part of the event for a very long time as well too. You know, great talent, well known within the running community. You know, we're we're very you know. We're a very tight knit community and it's amazing over the years just how many people, how close we've all grown and how, you know, Trent, I'm, I'm watching you over the years, how you've progressed, how you've grown. And Noel, I've watched the same thing with, with you and other, uh, so many other members of the community. You know, this is why we look forward to the event every year. 
we're not only giving back to a great cause, but we're setting an example for the community to contribute to, I think, good health, setting an example, you know, in terms of what athletics means for the community as well, too, and just watching some great competitive performances. Again, I applaud the effort. You know, I know it wasn't the, the most ideal circumstance this year. We would have loved to have been live on Main Street in Farmingdale. But just watching this, as I was watching this unfolding online, I felt like we were in the middle of something special. So, Noel, terrific job, both to you and, and to Trent. Thank you so much. Hey, Bob, question for you. A 525 mile is, is quite an accomplishment, isn't it? Yeah, you know, again, the, I, you know, I guess the, that's a trouble a lot of, why a lot of people probably don't want to run the mile because everyone knows, I guess, the real benchmark is a four minute mile. But again, that's for men. That was the original, you know, when Roger Bannister broke that for the first time sort of open up the floodgates. So the four minute mile is, has always been a benchmark for the mile, but 530 miles, not too shabby. So- Hey Bob, I, I always thought it was at my predecessor, uh, Prefontaine, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish I could run like Prefontaine, Pat. <laughs> you know? Hey, you, then you I know, would be a true legend like yourself. <laughs> I have to add a little bit too because congratulations to Noel and Trent and all the runners because you know I'm looking over Jimmy's shoulder and because of because of the inspiration that has passed down um, when you look over Jimmy's shoulder on his picture congratulating Noel and congratulating uh, Trent um, there's Gracie's you know team and Chris Crean they've been doing it for years and his daughter Grace decided let me get a bunch of my friends together and let's go raise money and let's do the mile for kids. And the thing I think you can be most proud of is, and by the way, the hat earlier, I, this was the very first Companions of Courage hat and I hold it near and dear to me. If, if I only wear it for our special events because it's about 16 years old. Um, <laughs> but the example to watch this race grow over 16 years and then somebody like Gracie who watches Trent and, you know, uh, Nicole and everyone who runs this race, they inspire the next generation. And uh, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Pass it on, be a good example, and, and, and hope to leave it better than we found it. And so when I see pictures like that, it brings back great memories. And we've had so many amazing memories over the last 16 years. I'm going to miss seeing the kids race, the women's race, the men's race, going having a burger, having a beer, <laughs> celebrating, handing out awards. The whole experience is what made it special. And I used to always say, you know, don't feel like you wake up on Monday and you're all tired. And the first thing I want you to tell everybody is, hey, what'd you do over the weekend? I helped a lot of kids. And oh, by the way, I ran a mile and had a great time seeing companions and courage friends. So I'm going to miss that, but this is the next best thing. But uh, it sure is. Uh, we've got, I'm just going to put up there the top 15 finishers uh, for speed and for distance. And the thing that, that jumps out is people from all over the country. Dave Zarin out in Michigan and, you know. Uh, D-Man. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's just wonderful to see so many people inspired by what Pat, by what you're doing with the Companions and Courage Foundation. Uh, why don't you tell us real quickly, Pat, some of the things that the foundation has done during the pandemic to try to connect people? Well, Jimmy, what's been great is, is we were able to raise uh, money to get masks to our health workers. Uh, one of the things we were able to get special tablets. Uh, people forget that obviously that by a lot of the hospitals were getting obviously bombarded with COVID, the COVID virus. Um, there, there are other hospitals that needed technology, um, whether it was uh, uh, the pediatric ward where children were coming, being born, they wanted to experience seeing that because we couldn't get close because of the, the, the COVID, obviously this crazy virus. Um, but it, one of the, the, the greatest things was we were able to send all kinds of tablets around to a lot of different children's hospitals, and Jimmy's shared the letters uh, of appreciation from the, ho the hospitals that were able to use this technology and then 
have content, extra content. And Jimmy, maybe you can share a little bit of the exciting content that we were able to have, whether it was NASA, whether it was this, the museums, the Air and Space Museum, a lot of different unique things that allowed child life and nurses to allow kids to have those experiences and, and really stay occupied and not feel isolated. Well, part of, part of the issue has been obviously with parents not being able to go visit their children because of COVID restrictions and then having uh, many on the child life staff that minister to the kids every day, either exposed to the virus or uh, coming down with it and, and really mitigating the size of the staff. So uh, we built a library, a YouTube channel that has everything from uh, astronauts to athletes to movie stars. Uh, just some of them are short videos giving short pieces of inspiration to the kids. And some of them are more long form. Uh, Andy Parton, our friend out at the Cradle of Aviation Museum in uh, Long Island, he was kind enough to let us go in there and shoot before the pandemic a bunch of videos with NASA engineers and astronauts that have flown to the moon and back. Uh, which by the way, I think today is the anniversary of Apollo 11 leaving the moon. So uh, <laughs> after the first moonwalk, which is pretty cool. But part of the fun of, of being able to put all this stuff together is we didn't know that one day it was gonna be a pandemic that basically shuts down the world. And we've gotten some really, really wonderful responses from hospitals who have been able to weather the storm because of the content that Companions and Courage has provided them. We've got Mark has a whole bunch of video from Heisman Trophy winners, the last eight or nine Heisman Trophy winners. And we've got that up there. And it's just a, to your point, Pat, team effort. And that's how you get through this. So Yeah, and Jimmy, one of the things... One of the things that it reminds me of is I tried to make a living knowing where the puck was going to go next. Yeah. And um, when this all hit, Edwin Schlossberg back in 2001 talked about creating these environmental feeling rooms where kids could walk in and have this feeling like they belong, where the, as you can see, Mark and the, the walls change colors, they curve up and, you have, you know, PCs and you have games and you have video conferencing pods and, and they could actually experience and communicate and not feel isolated. Never did we ever realize or think that we were going to have, you know, a pandemic. And what the pandemic really kind of put a spotlight on was that we were in a good position to have technology to be able to communicate and it, it became a huge asset and plus for the nurses and child life and for the hospital, especially once everything started to shut down and the technology was key in helping these children not feel isolated families and helping them out. So that's something I would have never anticipated, but it was nice to know where the puck was heading. I guess I could say that. <laughs> well, you certainly uh, made a difference. 50,000 kids a year benefit from your work. So I would, say, I would say that, uh, when your mother told you that if you could ever use your celebrity to help somebody in need, I think you listened pretty well. You, you did a good job, so. Oh, thank you, and it's all team, like you said, it's all team. It, it is. So with that, uh, we're gonna ask another member of our team, Matt Cappiello, who is out in Santa Monica. So, hey, Matt. there we go, Matt. Hey, Matt. Greetings oh, to you Matt. all. Matt, how you doing? Matt, he actually, he's he shaved for today's broadcast. He he had a beard that was as long as the, the cable cords on his earbuds, and he <laughs> and he uh, was kind enough to shave for us so we could actually see that beautiful face. What's what's <laughs> the point of a pandemic if you're not going to let yourself go? <laughs> I thought you were on the space station, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it's... So Matt Matt is uh, employed by Sony, and for the last probably half dozen years, uh, many people that have participated in the Main Street Mile are familiar with Matt and his wife, Heather. They've come in from California just about every year, and he always brings a little goodie for us. So 
Uh, it's usually a PlayStation 4, and he did that again this year, even though it was virtual. But it's actually not virtual. It's sitting in my office right now, the, the PS4. So Thanks, Matt. Thank, thank, thank you. Right, good. And thank you, Heather. Please. Thank you, Heather, too. Thank you, Heather. Heather would have joined us. She's on a call right now with the Lewis Carroll Society. Show oh. of hands, who's married to a Carolian scholar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she had a 4.30 call out here, but uh, otherwise she'd be, she's joined us for, uh, for the other uh, Courage Hours. So I, I regret that, uh, you know, we, we can go eavesdrop on her, but she'll, she certainly sends her regards and oh, we're Heather, certainly happy to contribute. Don't go down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. But By the way, how many people out there think that this is a Zoom bomb? You know, I, I want it corroborated that I'm not an infiltrator. <laughs> this, is, this is completely by design that I even, you know, busted my way into this circle. Well, I think it's, I think it's time, Mark, to have our, our live raffle. So the, the grand prize, obviously, we already know what it is. But, Mark, you're all set? I'm set. And by the way, I want to add one thing. Some of the videos you see online as well, particularly for the Main Street Mile, I want to just thank uh, Matt and Heather for doing some terrific work doing interviews and doing a lot of the, uh, the recordings also from some of the past year's races as well, too. I want to just call that out for everybody. Really, you know, really I, I'm, Thank you very much. I, I'm, I'm certainly glad to help. And I tell you, I, I, I will add one little detail to all this, which is it, it's pretty effortless having a dialogue with you, everybody on this screen, there's an, honestly a real birds of a feather element to this whole operation. Uh, because everybody, of course, I go out there in my first, uh, my first event, you know, I meet, I meet Jim, I, I meet Pat. And beyond that, I'm just meeting these other people, these other companions, these, uh, the Cheryls of the world, the, the Lears of the world, and ultimately Mark and everybody. And everybody seems to fall. You're all good stock, I suppose, is what I'm uh, essentially saying. And uh, so it, it, it's very easy, the, the rapport with anybody who's involved with this operation. It's one of the things that I really gravitate toward, which is one of the real perks of this whole operation. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, you're, you're the best. Thank you, you and Heather. We appreciate it. We're lucky. Uh, you know, and, and just before we go into the raffle, just want to thank all of the people who took time to send us images like Matt and Heather did. Matt and Heather, if you haven't seen it, Go on the Main Street Mile Facebook page. They, they did a hilarious video uh, out in California of uh, them running a mile. But all of these folks were, were brilliant in that they took time. Not only did they participate and sign up and run and do everything else, they also were kind enough to send us photographs of them while they, they were out running and it's been pretty brutally hot. So my compliments to all of these people who, you know, supported us. And, you know, Mindy, Mindy obviously has been on the race committee for 16 years. And, you know, we couldn't do what we do without her help. And it's just, uh, it's just really special. And, and, you know, this all started with Bob and Pat. And, uh, you know. Hey, there's no, hey, there's no. Oh. Noel, we got Noel. Congratulations. Hey, Noel. Awesome. Noel is out running. What are you doing? Hi, Noel. <laughs> we got to we got to get audio on Noel. That's awesome. Noel, are you running tonight? Oh my gosh. We can't hear you, but we see you. You look great. And you got your runner's edge bib on. You're ready to go. Love it. <laughs> we, we, we're, we're so proud of the effort that you put in to, to run a great time, but also to run 100 miles plus. And, you know, that, the fact that you participated at multiple levels and helped a lot of kids is really what this event is about. And we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for what you did. I tried to explain before that you're a, you're a professor at Malloy and, you, and you've done work with the Cold Spring Harbor Labs and you're, you're involved in science that is so far beyond my comprehension, I won't even try. 
to talk about it, but I guess I guess you have a lot of time to think while you're running, huh? Here, she studied pediatric brain cancer right there, Jim. Oh my God. That's one of the things she studied. Wow, that's amazing. Uh -huh. I'm reading what she's typing. Wow. My audio is not working, but Noel, thank you for everything. Great job. What an inspiration. Someday we're going to get you, Noel, to talk to some of the kids at the hospital. We're going to do this, okay? Oh, you're at the track with your four kids right now. <laughs> that would be awesome. We would love think, to have I think, you. I think she types better than she runs. She's quick. <laughs> We're going to have you come out one day and talk to the kids on one of these courage hours. I think they would find you inspirational and uh, I, I think that would be great. So thank you for agreeing to do that. That would be really, really special. Thank you. Thanks, Noel. Congratulations Noelle. again, Noel. Yeah, thank you, Noel. Thank you. So, uh, awesome. Mark, we're going to throw it back to you and we're going to ask you if you wouldn't mind uh, going through, I'm not sure exactly what all of the prizes are, but maybe you can just go ahead and run this. I'm happy to do it. So there's six prizes. So it's not the usual, and not the usual array of prizes that you see at the Nutty Irishman, but we were fortunate to get some great donations. So aside from the PS4, we've got a $25 gift certificate, certificate from 317 Maine which is right next door to the Nutty Irishman, and it's owned by Joe, Joe Fortuna, who is the um, Nutty Irishman's owner. Um, I've got a little packet of uh, Yankee gift, a David Cohen autograph, and a Mariano Rivera plaque, a Hall of Fame plaque. We got a book, um, Pat's book, that's uh, autographed, Companions and Courage. We also have, um, among other things, we've also got, if you could see over here, an Amazon Fire tablet as well. So I've got that in my possession. Jim, I know you got the Sony PS4. That's the that's uh, that's one of the grand prizes. Luckily, and my son didn't come home, or it would have been open and played with. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah, also have that thing. we also have an Amazon one hundred dollar gift certificate as well, too. So those are the six prizes that we have. So, you know, I, should I do my impression of the wise man, perhaps? But all kidding aside, I've got everybody's name in here and. Part of your $25 registration fee was also an entry into this raffle. So, you know, we did incredibly well this year. Actually, Jim, I'll share with everyone before we do the raffle, the precise figure we've raised to date. I set a $10,000 goal, and Jim, we were looking at each other saying, do, do we really think we can meet it? We're at $10,463. We beat the goal. Wow, that's awesome. Thanks. Great job. So you know what? And it's not just the entry into the event, but the generosity of people, be it Johnny Ward, be it Cheryl, you know, uh, be it the generosity of Cisco as well. But I mean, you know, you can go right down the line with so many donors, Dr. Larry Lembo. Um, I got a number of donations this morning, people who reached out to me unsolicited. And so again, we're, you know, this is all a team is, you know, Pat, as you've been saying, it's all team effort over here. And it's a team we should all be put, proud to be part of. Okay. So without any further ado, I'm going to draw the first prize over here and it's gonna be the 317 Maine gift certificate. And the winner is Kendall Coolen. So if you're not here, again, we're gonna send it on to you. Kendall, Kendall Coolen. Kendall Coolen, excuse me for mispronouncing. Oh, that's, okay. John, that's John Clean's dog, I know John, yep. Okay. Hey, cut hey, Mark. Kendall. Mark. Let me jump in there one minute. Can you hear me? Yes. You never ask, so let me throw this in now. Let me throw in a couple of $25 gift certificates to the runner's edge. Wow. All right. Thank you, Bob. Very That's nice, Bob. All right. Yeah, Bob. And so add to the well. I hope you guys win those. <laughs> Let's hey, draw them next. Hey, okay. Bob, if you throw Bob, in one more, that equals seven five. Oh, that's right, Pat. So I with one more. That's seventy-five dollars. Seventy-five years old. Three quarters of a century. Hey guys, I didn't want Here to win this. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Pat. 
All right, so let's do the Runner's Edge gift certificate. $25 next. Bob, thank you so much for that. Mark Acosta. Mark Acosta. All right, I know Mark. Mark. All right. And the next Runner's Edge $25 gift certificate goes to the winner is Dawn Johnson. Oh, hey. my niece. Nice. I, she's a Farmingdale girl. She's going to be over there tomorrow. That's beautiful. All Thank right. Thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bob. Welcome. The Yankee, the Yankee gift packet. So this is an autographed picture of David Cohn. Hall of Fame plaque with Mariana Rivera. And the winner. I think Matt is, needs to win this. Jason Faber. Uh, is there a room on my wall, do you think? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Jason? Jason won that, Mark? Jason Faber. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Hey, hey listen, I think, I think Noel might be able to speak now. I see, unless my concussions oh. are in, I see double. Oh, hello, no, Noel. I can speak. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank you for having me on. I've been on the whole time, but I was having trouble because I'm at the track. So just kind of connecting and getting the right audio. But I'm here. Congratulations, <laughs> you. Nicole. Congratulations on a yeah. great effort. Thank you. Thank you. I've had a lot more time on my hands than usual to train. So. <laughs> yeah. hey, Nicole, is that, is that right that you study uh, pediatric, pediatric brain cancer? Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, I study uh, medulloblastoma. I actually, I lost my nephew um, when he was 18 months old to, uh, to medulloblastoma. So um, I went, I was, I was already studying cancer. And then um, when I got my own lab, I uh, shifted the focus to work on the tumor that he lost his life to. And so um, most of my role is, you know, training undergraduate and graduate students that are going into the field of medicine. But, um, but yeah, that's what our focus is. That's amazing. Wow. What a true companion and courage. That's wonderful. God bless. Thank you. Yeah. We try to find ways to, um, to give them better treatment options because oftentimes they're too young to get chemo and radiation. Um, so we, we look at, we're really, really interested in immunology and immunotherapy. So that's what a lot of our focus has been the last couple of years. That's amazing. Wow. And has and, and running been always a passion of yours or? You know, you've done it ever since. How, how when did you start? Um, I started um, probably right um, right around when my nephew got sick. It's kind of a, just a way to uh, you know de-stress. And then um, we were holding you know walks for him, and then it turned into let me sign up for a half marathon and raise money for uh, you know American Cancer Society or whatever it was at the time, and then. Um, I live in Farmingdale, so, um, you know, I just kind of met Bob Cook and everybody at the Runner's Edge and, um, you know, joined the team and had a bunch of babies and, you know, I keep leaving and coming back, but now, uh, but now I'm here to stay. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to when you look, Noel. it's yeah. hard when I look at you always, every time to think that you have four babies. Yeah. <laughs> not babies anymore. They're not babies. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, the oldest, the oldest is nine and the youngest is five, and they're uh, they're running around somewhere on this field. I hope. But <laughs> congratulations! Yeah, it's great. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. Awesome. I wouldn't miss this. It, so it actually runs the Main Street Mile runs right by my house, so I was disappointed that we weren't going to able to run it. But I, I run it over every day. <laughs> how, how many miles did you do? Total uh, runs did you do during this time for the oh, leap? God, yeah, it's been a lot. I mean, um, I, th I think it was like 106 for the that's month. Ex that's exactly what it was, Noel. 106 yeah, miles. Of yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I had this big shoot. dream of doing the Ironman, so um, so I've just kind of continued that training, even though it's not happening this year. So, <laughs> um, but you know how runners and triathletes are. We just we're just gonna keep going. So it doesn't right. matter if it's or not. So. Speed. Keep picking up speed. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Hey, Bob, I think you're the Pied Piper in Farmingdale, maybe all along Long Island. <laughs> no, we hope. We hope so. I got to go for like 25 more years is my goal now. <laughs> Dude, I, if I can drive them on, you know. I'm, I'm on your side. I'm not betting against you. No, I hope so, Pat. 
<laughs> All right. So, want to finish up the raffle here? Okay. All right. All right. So, Companions and Courage, autographed by Pat LaFontaine, personally autographed book. And the winner is Kevin Arloff. All right. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, All right. was, Kevin was one of our uh, top finishers in a six and a half mile. That's awesome. Amazon Fire Tablet. That's the next prize. And the winner. Joyce Murray. All right, Joyce. Joyce. Very nice. Amazon $100 gift certificate. And the winner is <laughs> Patty Johnson. Hey, that's my sister-in-law. That's I think great. I know. Another, another farming dealer. <laughs> All right, Jim. The relative. I'll tell her All she's right. got to spend it at the store, though. Right. <laughs> All right. This is it. This is for the Sony PS4. Okay. Make it Drum up. Roll. I think you should telepathy it to Matt. Matt should call it. All right. I, I'm ready to receive. David Kaplan. David Kaplan. All right. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. I, this, was, this was a unique year. We learned a lot. I personally, and again, I know it's it's not been an easy time out there, but personally, I found this very, very rewarding on a personal basis. You know, we go back to what it's all about with the kids at the end of the day and being able to stage this event, even though it was under a different venue and done virtually. I personally found this extremely rewarding, loved watching the excitement and even some of the fun competition that there was as well, too. Some of the great memories that Jim is showing here as well. You know, I mean, my, my hope and expectation is we're going to be back bigger and bigger and better than ever in 2021. So I just want to personally say thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for all your efforts. And hey, listen, sometimes when, uh, you know, you get thrown some adversity, it's always good to kind of stick together and figure out how we could still make a difference. And I think everybody here, and I, and I have to mention maybe a few more names, Bob, is your team with Mark, and then obviously Jimmy mentioned Mindy and Craig and Eric. Um, you, you know, amazing team year after year, and then every everybody here who helps out, and Mark being one of the, the leaders. But uh, it, it takes a team, and it takes an anchor, and, an, and a real uh, uh, foundational piece as, as Runner's Edge and you to, to do this 16 years, and let's, uh, let's all get healthy. Let's find a vaccine, and Let's all be together next year because uh, this is fun and it's important to keep this alive. And I think to do this virtually and keep everybody active and leaving, living healthy lives and helping kids is so important. But it's also nice to, uh, to see everybody personally. I'll miss everybody this year, but thank you for doing this. And thanks to everybody out there who did this and raised money for the kids. As Jimmy said, from the bottom of our hearts, I see a difference it makes. I know, uh, Noel, you know the difference it makes yeah. when you see a kid going through a tough time and you see what Companions and Courage does to put a smile on their face, and not only their face, their parents, their siblings, the whole family gets affected. So, um, like I said, I wear a lot of good hats. This is the best hat I'll ever wear right here. <laughs> thank you. And thank, thank you, everybody. Again, Jimmy. We got to give Jimmy Johnson a big uh, hand here because yeah. he's the orchestrator to everything. So, thank you, thank you, Jim. Listen, I want to say one thing before we end up as well, too. I mean, I can't, Bob. I remember when you and I were at a Long Island track and field lunch, and what was it back in two thousand four? And we yeah. were just talking at the, you know, after the brunch, and we were talking about this idea of doing a, a race for companions and courage, and look at what it turned into. <laughs> that also, I will say, working with you, Mindy, Craig. You know, Eric and, you know, everyone, the whole team, the whole staff there at the store, you guys are top notch. I'm honored to call you my friend. Uh, this is, that's been one of the most rewarding. It's been a big rewarding part of my life, not just doing this race with you, but being involved with you guys. It's the best. Well, thank you so much, Mark. 
Thanks, Mark. And thanks, everybody. Thank Congratulations again to Noel and to Trent on your his, his great thank efforts. You. Just great efforts. We can't thank you enough for what you did. Matt, thank you for your support. And, and everybody here that's watching tonight, thank you so much for, for everything you've done to support the kids. We're going to promise to get back bigger and better next year. Yep. Even if, you know, we have to run with masks on next year. We're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Everybody, thanks for ages. well until we see you again. And, and thanks again for your support. God bless everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Be you, Bob. Be well, Noel, Trent, right. Matt, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, thank everyone. Good job. See you soon, Noel. Good job, Trent. Yeah, it's good to see you. Pat, thanks, good. Noel. Thank you, thank Pat. You. Love you, Pat. Love you guys.